So welcome back everyone, and boy do we have something pretty cool to show off today. At least I certainly hope so. All right, so I'm stumbling on a website the other day to where I routinely look for things to make new content. I'm looking for tools, and I stumble across this guy right here, and it says it is a diesel heater. So I, first of all, I'm like, what on earth is a diesel heater? I read up on a little bit, I save it to a wish list, and I go on about my business. I've actually been looking for a heater. So the reason I've been looking for a heater is because of this guy right here. So what I've been using to kind of heat me inside the shop here over the last year or two is this kerosene heater. Kerosene heaters work awesome, but with that said, you've got to be right near them. They're basically just for warming your hands up, and they don't put off the heat but about this far away. So it's a very close proximity heater. Not to mention kerosene's getting extremely hard to find and very expensive. So while I love my kerosene heater, but I have no plans to get rid of it, I wanted something else, a diesel heater. Let's show this off. I had no idea these things even existed. So I did a quick little search on YouTube and now I kind of feel like an idiot. Apparently these things are all the rage. Why YouTube has never suggested a video to me? Because this is the type of content that I watch. I had no idea about these, but apparently what these diesel heaters are really big with right now is people that are into prepping, wanting to heat small spaces, worried about kind of off-grid uh, loss of power situations, and backcountry camping. These seem to be really popular with that. So long story short, we're gonna pop this cover off right here. It's essentially got a diesel tank up top that you fill with, well, diesel, and there is a heater in the bottom. So you actually get an ignition here. There's a blower fan that blows across it. It's supposed to be relatively clean, dry, hot air that comes out and you've got a small compact portable heater here. Now, the reason I'm excited about this is for one, well, power outage or prepping type situations and a personal space heater that actually has a force fan now. So when I'm working in here in the shop over the winter right now, it would be nice to have a heater that'll heat a small area, really warm my hands up. Plus I have some rooms inside my shop and something really cool coming up in another video to where we're gonna use one of these to take care of actually heating a space, an off-grid space. So these things are relatively simple and basic. Little tank up top. This is the actual heating or ignition chamber itself. There's a fan on the back that pulls air through across a, uh, like a heat sink on the inside. You got a tube, your outlet on the other end. It pulls in air in the back, shoves out warm air on the other end. It's a relatively basic design. Now there's tons of these on Vivor's website. I forgot to mention, that's the company that I got mine from is Vivor. And they rate them on output from 2KW up to the most powerful model that I see right here is 8KW. What that essentially means, I do not know. We're gonna have to fire this up and see how much heat output in the area that I get. But what a lot of people are doing with these, this comes with a flexible tube that I can stretch on out, but a lot of people buy much longer versions of these, put it on the front and run it up into campers, uh, pop-up tents on the top of vehicles, sprinter vans, things like that. And a lot of them just mount this on the outside near a wheel well, things like that, and then you force your hot air in through the tube into your tent or wherever it is you're sleeping. Now I'm done read a ton of reviews on these. People are claiming they're getting like 10 to 12 hours of runtime off of this little tank right here. If that's the case, that's gonna be awesome. So this particular model comes with a power cable out the back. You do have to run this off a of 12 volt. These are really made for like de-icing and keeping vehicles nice and warm on the inside, whether that be a semi, camping, whatever that may be. And I wired in a 12 volt plug on the end. It comes with just two wires on the end so you can do alligator clamps. Um, you basically, you put your connections on if you wanna go to a battery or if you wanna do like I'm gonna do runoff cigarette lighter. I've got something special I'm gonna do for this. And FYI, you're gonna probably be curious just like me, can this run on something else other than diesel? AKA refined oil, homemade diesel, things like that. I did ask the company and they told me, no, this is designed for diesel fuel only. However, in a future video, we may play around with some of that. Especially for off-grid type situations, it'd be nice if we could refine some oil and do some other things and get one of these reliably running off of that.
All right, so this is the part that gets me excited the most. The fact that I already keep quite a bit of diesel on hand and don't have to do any traveling to get it should I need it in any kind of situation. Tell you what, I've done made one heck of a mess. Use my little battery powered pump here to put it into this tank so I don't make more of a mess. All right, so that didn't take just a few seconds to fill up there. If it runs as long as people claim on that small of a tank, that's awesome. All right, so one little oversight worth noting is, you see I had to screw a couple little wood feet on here. I already knew I was gonna have to do that because I could not put a sharp enough bend in this exhaust pipe to fit with the factory feet. I wish they would make them a little taller to fit that, but I had already done watched several of the YouTube channels and seeing that this was a common problem. And by the way, it's the same problem no matter what brand of heater that you get. So maybe in the future, some longer feet will be on there since you have to connect the hoses on the bottom. But that was no big deal. So I decided to leave my exhaust pipe out in the air and loose, and there's a reason why. I'm gonna actually put it different directions based on where I run this at. I'll show you, I have a room in here with an old dryer port that goes out the wall that can actually handle heat, and I wanna be able to bend this over and put there. As far as the air intake goes, I just wire tied it or zip tied it right here to the back of the unit. It should be perfectly fine right there. All right, so here's my thinking. I'm gonna take my little portable power bank. This is my EcoFlow River Pro. Had this thing for a long time. I love how small it is. I love the portability. Not only does this have 110 volt outlets on it, it's got a relatively powerful 12 volt plug on the front right here as well. So I'm kind of thinking this stuff is gonna be used you know, for every day just in the shop. I need to stay warm while I'm working. But as I start doing things around the property down the road, I'm gonna start thinking more for preparing situations, off-grid situations, things such as that. And something like this, well, I can charge it via solar. I can charge it 12 volts out of a vehicle or 110 volt on the wall should I have it available. So you kind of do get a true off-grid heating solution by doing something like this. All right, my display is lit up. It's telling me I have 13 volts. Let's power this on. Fan is blowing. I see we're pulling seven watts over there. Let me adjust the temperature. Okay, we're up to 110 watts. 118, it's kind of cycling back and forth. Still climbing, 135, 144 watts, 150. So I've kind of figured there was gonna be an initial draw. So the way I understand these units right here, because we're running diesel in here, not only do we have to power a fuel pump, we have to power a glow plug. It's gonna take it a minute to warm up and actually start ignition in here. And then the fan should actually kick on and we should start actually putting out hot air. Then we can control the unit, turn the temperature up and down. It's my understanding it may take up to a minute or two for this process to start. Then you're in business, it's running from here on out. Okay, we're about a minute in, still cool air. I smell what smells like a tiny little bit of exhaust. The fan is ramping up, the fuel pumps speeding up. Sounds like it's working. Now, while this is warming up, this is a good time to go ahead and talk about anytime you're burning a fuel, you potentially are getting a carbon monoxide. By the way, this just started, this just started heating up. Now, listen at it. Sounds like there's fire and ignition going in there. Okay, so a little over a minute, about a minute and a half in, I hear that we've actually ignited. So that was the actual warm up time for the uh, glow plug itself. But as I was saying, in a big open shop like this with big open bay doors, I'm not as concerned about carbon monoxide output from the exhaust here. But if you're gonna run one of these inside, the exhaust itself needs to be plumbed to the outside. So the other option you could do is actually put this entire unit outside. I see a lot of people do that when van camping. And then you just run your actual air output nozzle right here up into the uh, source. Okay, we're two minutes in. We're down to 30 watts now. Hear this? Sounds like we have full ignition. All right, now my air is starting to warm up. 
My exhaust is actually very, very warm. So it looks like about a minute and a half to two minutes to get you up to full ignition. All right, so I have had this running for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And first impressions. This thing puts out some heat, y'all. A heck of a lot more heat than my kerosene heater. So that's already a positive. Now, a couple of things to note. I got my little handy dandy thermometer out here. The exhaust pipe itself, I'll swing the camera around in a minute, gets hot enough as in 290, nope, 305 degrees. If you let that exhaust pipe lay on any plastic or wood like I did, my wood actually started to smolder. So what I'm gonna do is get some of that fiberglass exhaust pipe wrap, like for motorcycle pipes, headers, things like that. And I'm gonna wrap that pipe. Stuff's really cheap, grab it off of Amazon to protect myself. And I knew the exhaust was gonna be hot. Now here's the other surprising thing. I went ahead and put this nozzle on right here. It's about too hot to touch. As in 184 degrees, so yeah, that's quite hot. But I also have this unit on max heat, full blast. All right, so I'm inside the pipe, which is kind of where the nice hot air is coming out. I'm holding 170 degrees. Like, there's a lot of heat coming out of there. So what I would say is get you some insulated pipe if you're gonna run up into a camper or something like that. That's what I see a lot of people online do, insulated four inch you know, duct pipe that you can run all the way up into somewhere, and that'll help hold off the heat. This piece right here, I think is just kind of an added included piece if you want to point you know, a different direction. This is how I think I'm gonna run it. With the pipe off the front, it is throwing a swath of heat about about that big right here, and then it just kind of fans out. And I tell y'all what, I don't know if the camera's gonna see me all the way over here, but I am about 10 to 12 feet away, and I can feel the warm air just kind of going all around me. Now, it's nowhere near as warm over there as it is right here, but the point is, this is blowing hotter air than I was expecting, uh, further than I was expecting. It's got a really decent fan in it. Uh, let me turn this down to low. And listen, I already hear the fan slowly toning down. I hear the exhaust toning down. The whole machine's getting a lot quieter now. So the other cool thing too is this is pulling a whopping, now that I'm going to low, kind of staying around 20 to 30 watts. And my little EcoFlow power supply here is telling me it can run this for like 30 hours. So you could get a heck of a long run time, many nights actually, on a device like this with something like this. Um, if you had a snowstorm, blizzard, something like that. All right, I like how nice and quiet this is getting now on low. Still a significant amount of heat coming out. Now, when you power this device off, you don't unplug the power. You have to press and hold the power button, and then this goes into a cool down mode. I think it slowly burns off the glow plug probably, and then allows the fan to run across the heat sink and internal components for a while. When you're getting something that exceptionally hot on the inside, it needs to have a cool down mode. So don't ever just kill power. Speaking of, since I know the inside is 360 degrees because I just shot it, I'm touching the unit, relatively cool to the touch. I want to avoid this exhaust pipe though, I know that. I'm gonna get that wrapped very soon. The back, the sides, the front, maybe just a little warm to the touch. Now speaking of temperature, one thing I wish we could see, this does Celsius, this does not do Fahrenheit, and I don't see how in the manual to potentially change that over. Not the end of the world. It's got two modes, an uh, auto mode where you can actually set Celsius temperature, or a manual mode which has one through six. That's what I'm gonna run. So I'm gonna know when I'm out here in the shop, and I've got it on three and I feel comfortable, or maybe I'm a little cold, but I'll put it up to four, five, or six. I truly don't care about the actual temperature, the Fahrenheit itself. It would be a nice feature to have, but ultimately the one through six uh, scale is good enough for me. Just know to put it on six high blast whenever I'm freezing. Now I've been running about 20 minutes and I, I don't even know how high the tank was, but my tank looks like it's down that much. I've still got a ton of fuel left in here. So I'm gonna be using this a lot over the next few days after this cold front comes through. And this is gonna be my new shop heater right here, as well as I'm eventually making me a little hobby room in there. This is gonna be the perfect heater in that spot as well. 
So hopefully you all enjoyed that. This is like a cool little prepper item, prepared for storms, outages, whatever the world may throw at us, or just cooling off the corner of your shop that you're gonna be working in. And the cool thing is, if you get this model like without a tank, they're under $100. If you get this model right here with a tank, it's a little over $100. I'll have the links down in the description. These things are extremely affordable. That's what I can't get over, how you have all the functions going on in here, the Wi-Fi remotes, everything else and a package that's a little over a hundred bucks. That's just crazy cheap. That's cheaper than, well, my kerosene heater cost. All right, well, I'm late to the party on these things. Just discovered them, thought they were quite exciting. Um, it's gonna be an excellent little shop heater. By the way, I've got another one coming. I told y'all we've got a really cool project coming up here. I'll get another video out in a week or two, and then I'll fill you in on how well this one has worked for me as well. Catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.